Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to lesson 30 for Education for Nepal English Group. Uh, this is our YouTube channel link for past lesson recordings. Today we'll start off with chemistry, then do history, and then end off with physics. All right, for chemistry today, I'm going to be learning about uh, solutions and mixtures. All right, so basically solutions are a mixture where all particles are evenly mixed, so they're considered homogenous, which means that it's the same all throughout and completely uniform. Uh, solutions can involve gases, solids, and liquids. Uh, they're composed of a solute and a solvent. Uh, the solute is the substance that is dissolved in the solvent, while the solvent is just the medium which the solute is dissolved in. And uh, to form a solution, the intermolecular forces in both the solute and solvent need to be broken and then reformed. And in the picture, you can see this some sort of solid being placed in a liquid, and then that creates the solution, which is just a combination of both of them. All right, mixtures, they're just a combination of two or more substances in any proportion. And instead of being homogeneous, like a solution, mixtures are usually heterogeneous which means that the composition varies and is not uniform. Uh, the two substances in a mixture are not chemically bonded unlike the uh, solution. They differ from chemical compounds as mixtures can be separated through physical means like filtration and freezing. Um, there is also little to no energy change and substances in mixtures keep their separate pro properties. And you can see two types of mixtures, the heterogeneous and the hom homogeneous. Or the heterogeneous is mostly separate still. All right, solubility, basically the ability of the solute to dissolve in the solvent to create a, a solution. And when a liquid can completely dissolve in another liquid, the two liquids are miscible. If two substances can never mix to make a solution, they're called immiscible. And uh, solute can be a, a solid, liquid, or gas, while the solvent is usually some sort of solid or liquid. And, uh, yeah, you can see that in picture. All right, for the questions, uh, one, what are solutions composed of? Solid and liquid? Um, not necessarily. Uh, it's in the first, can you go to the first slide actually? Yeah. Solid and liquids can make a solution. Yeah, the solute and solvent, that's correct. All right. The second question is, are solutions homogeneous or heterogeneous? Uh, yes, as in they're homogeneous or they're heterogeneous? Only homogeneous. Yeah, that's um, that's correct. Nice job. What does it mean when two li liquids are miscible?
Uh, I guess you can get to the third or the third slide on the. Is soluble. Uh, yeah, that's basically correct. And, uh, uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's it for chemistry. All right, history, it'll be Cold War. Uh, the Cold War was from 1947 to 1991. Uh, it was between the United States and Soviet Union. The United States was capitalist while oh, and democratic, while the Soviet Union was communist. Uh, these two ideas don't really agree with each other. So when the Soviets started planting communist regimes in U Eastern Europe, the uh, U.S. wanted to stop this. Um, part of the, they, so they did this using the Marshall Plan. Uh, which basically gave economic aid to European countries because they're kind of all damaged heavily after World War II. And with the money, the European countries could buy goods from America to like rebuild themselves. So basically, the, it just gave uh, United States manufacturers jobs, so it benefited us too. All right, so one of the events that happened shortly after was the Berlin airlift, uh, well, the blockade and then the airlift. So basically after Germany was defeated in World War II, um, their capital Berlin was split among uh, the US, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union. Um, the Soviet Union feared the return of Germany because they were like attacked twice by them already in World War I and II. So they wanted to keep it separated and weak while the allies had other plans. So they, so the U Soviet Union basically blockaded all road, rail and water access to Berlin. Um, but because the Berlin citizens were kind of starving and their resources ran out, the US and UK just airlifted food and fuel to Berlin from Western Germany. And eventually, as you can see in the bottom right picture, um, the Soviet Union lifts the blockade. Oh, and the Soviet Union are called Reds. I'm not sure why, but it's probably because their flag is mostly red. And um, this was a result of increased tensions between the Western and Soviet powers. Okay, another event was the Korean War. Um, it was between North Korea and South Korea, with North Korea being backed by Soviet Union and later China, and South Korea by the um, uh, United States, although kind of reluctantly. Um, the war started out as defensive uh, on sort of South Korea's side, and but eventually the aim of the war was changed to liberate the entire Korean Peninsula from communists. Um, they didn't really work, and they eventually came to a stalemate. And so the U.S. and North Korea agreed on a truce um, at the 30th parallel, which you can see in the to the right. Um, and also this non-military uh, zone where no fighting can occur. And uh, this still exists today. All right, so the space race was this competition between the Soviet Union and the United States and also some other countries um, to become the first to explore space, basically. And this was to prove the economic superiority, superiority of the respective countries. And then by extension, they're political economic system, so like capitalist v. communism again. Um, so the Soviet Union was the first to get a, uh, a man-made object into 
Earth's, Earth's orbit, um, which is called Sputnik. Um, in 1958, the U.S. created NASA to for space endeavors. Um, and then the Soviets got another victory because they got the first man into space. Um, but then the U.S. were the first to get someone on the moon and walk on it, being Neil Armstrong. And after that, they just declared victory in the war. Uh, not the war, the space race, even though they, the Soviets did like everything else first. But yeah. All right, and then the last event I'll cover is the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, during the Cold War, the U.S. and Soviet Union were in this arms race. So basically, they were trying to create as many intercontinental ballistic missiles as possible. And then um, after the U.S. made uh, started showing intentions of taking over Cuba because um, it was ruled by uh, Fidel Castro, who was communist. Uh, the Soviet Union sent nuclear missiles there to deter invasion because they wanted as many places to be communist as possible. Um, this event was the closest uh, there has ever been to a nuclear warfare. And although this is super simplified, um, in 1962, uh, the US and Soviets agreed to a proposal where the Soviet would remove their missiles, but the US would not invade. So basically just letting Cuba be communist. All right, and then the, the Cold War ended. So around 1960s, I think, the Soviet Union and Chinese relationship collapsed because of their differing views in communism. This was also because I think Stalin died a few years ago. Um, and then Mikhail uh, S. Gorbachev, I think, uh, he be also began to democratize the Soviet political system, as well as let communist regimes that in Eastern Europe collapse. So he basically kind of ended, he, he was like a catalyst to ending the Soviet Union. And then um, it, all, it, it was all over when the Soviet Union collapsed into 15 independent nations, um, in the as you can see in the bottom right, um, including Russia, which uh, is, is the end of the Cold War. All right, so just a few questions. Uh, why did the Soviet Union want to keep Germany split apart? I think this was said in the Berlin airlift and blockade slide. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, the Soviet Union wanted. <laughs> Please, so question again. Um, why did the Soviet Union want to keep Germany split? Because the Soviet Union feared the return of Germany. They wanted to keep it split and separated and weak. All right. Thank you, Susilo. All right, uh, got it. Next question. Uh, who backs North Korea and who backs South Korea in the Korean War? North, um, Soviet Union, China, and South Korea back from North Korea and can you hear? 
Uh, yeah, okay, that's uh, you're correct so far. All right, does anyone know who backed South Korea? Yeah, I know. Wait. All right, uh, go ahead. Mm. From North Korea, Soviet Union, China. Yes. And from South Korea, uh, back for, which was backed by the United States. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Um, and then the third question was, uh, what event was the closest to causing a nuclear war? Uh, it was not the space race. Sorry, Prior, Priyad. Um, it was a little after the space race. Uh, yes, that's correct. It was the Cuban Missile Crisis. All right, and next up is physics. All right, so hi, everyone. So we're going to be going over kinematics for physics. So first of all, what are kinematics? So kinematics is pretty much the study of motion without using forces. So you can basically study like stuff like displacement, velocity, acceleration. And then some examples of kinematics is like projectile motion, which is like kicking a soccer ball, as you can see here. And then free fall, which is like dropping something. So this is probably a review for some of you, but here are just some like important variables that are related to kinematics. So obviously there's the displacement which is the change in position of an object. And then there is speed, which is distance over time. And then there's velocity, which is displacement over time. And its units are in meters per second. And then lastly, there's acceleration, which is the change in velocity over time. And its units are in meters per second squared. So here are the big five equations, as you can see on the right. And then it uses five variables, um, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement. So each one of these equations um, is missing one of these variables, which makes, it, which makes each of these equations useful. So in the first equation, um, you don't need displacement. And then in the second equation, um, in the second equation, you don't need velo the final velocity. And then the third equation, you don't need the initial. And then fourth, uh, yeah, the fourth equation, you don't need time. And then fifth, equa fifth equation, you don't need acceleration. So yeah, they, they all help you out um, in their ways. So here's problem one, which is a car travels along a highway for 20 meters in two seconds. Calculate its average velocity. And then after you've calculated that, um, the driver sees a police car ahead and slows down to five meters per second in three seconds. And then you wanna find the car's average acceleration. So yeah, two part question. Uh, I'll give you guys some time to do it. And you can put your answers in the chat or you can obviously unmute and say it.
All right, does anyone uh, have an idea? Okay, uh, Alicia put 10, which is correct for the first part, so good job. Kismat also got 10, yep, that's good. Then you guys can try doing the second part after that. Yeah, so you want to use 10, 10 meters per second in the second question to calculate the acceleration. Okay, Prayad. Prayad got five, which yes, it is correct, but yeah, it depends on what, how, like where, what, what you state your positive direction to be. Um, but yeah, five is correct for the acceleration, and then yeah, I'll just probably I'll just I'll just do the solution real quick. So here's the solution. So obviously, most of you guys did the first part right which is calculating the velocity, pretty simple, right? It's just velocity equals displacement over time. So we get uh, 20 meters over two seconds, right? Displacement is 20 times two, and then we get 10 meters per second. And then for the second part, right? We know that acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So the change of velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So yeah, so the final velocity will be negative five and then initial will be minus 10. And then we divide that by three seconds, which is the time. So negative 15 over three equals negative five meters per second squared. And that's our acceleration. So the reason why it's negative is because the direction of the acceleration is opposite to the direction of the velocity, which means that the car is slowing down, right? And as you can see, the problem slows down, right, from 10 to 5 in 3 seconds. So yeah, good job. And then here's problem 2, which is uh, a rock is dropped from an 80 meter high cliff. If it strikes the ground with a velocity of 40 meters per second, what acceleration did it experience during its descent? So this question uses uh, one of the equations from obviously the five equations that you see on the right, and you want to uh, be able to know which one to use given the variables so yeah so try to use the information from the problem and then i'll give you guys some time to do it and then yeah put your answers in the chat
All right. Um, does anyone have any ideas? Actually, I'll probably just give a hint. So because you don't know the time, um, it's not given the time in this problem. You want to use the fourth equation, as you can see here, which is final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the displacement. And then you want to solve for acceleration. I'll give a couple more minutes if um, no one seems to get the answer, I can go over the solution. But yeah, you want to use the fourth equation. Okay, if no one has any more ideas, uh, I'll just reveal the solution. Obviously, if you're still doing the problem, you can keep doing it. But uh, yeah, so here is the solution. So basically, looking at the problem, you can see that you know three things, or three variables, actually, which is the initial velocity, which is zero, because you're dropping it, right? And then the final velocity, which is 40, because it says it strikes the ground with the velocity of 40. And then, you know, the displacement as well, right? Which is 80 meters. A rock is dropped from an 80 meter high cliff. So knowing these three things, you can look at these five equations and then you can see that the fourth one makes sense because you have what you have, what, uh, what the, what this equation has, which is final velocity, initial velocity and displacement. And you want to solve for acceleration. So, Obviously, we put the equation here and then um, we separate or we isolate acceleration and then we do a uh, final velocity squared divided by two times displacement. And then the initial velocity we already said was zero, so we don't have to worry about that. And then, so we can plug in the numbers now. So final velocity 40, so 40 squared over two times the displacement, which is 80, and then we end up getting 10 meters per second squared as our acceleration. All right, so this is the end. Um, thank you guys all for coming this week. And then, um, yeah, we would appreciate it if you guys could fill out some feedback if you want to. Um, someone can like paste the form into the chat and you guys can fill it out. But yeah, so thank you guys all for coming. Yeah, and that's it.